Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I am your host, Adam Peddle. And I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And today, we have a very special guest on. It's Wardy NYM, and we are going to be discussing who won the offseason between the Blue Jays or the Mets. But before we get into that, guys, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, the whole shebang. And also, if you like losing money like we do, then hop on the Monkey Knife Fight. Use our code TODAYJAYS right over there. Make a deposit, and uh, you'll be really helping out the podcast. And... Uh, yeah, getting on the train of losing money with the boys. Woo! So, uh, we'll good. lose money together, guys. We'll go good, live. Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, I'll be like, oh, Bo, Bo's hitting three dingers today. I'm putting it all on that. I think I might be losing some money right now, actually, uh, unless Matthews yes. and Marner want to uh, want to pick it up. So get your best advice from us. Mm-hmm, yeah. For real. Um, so, guys, uh, I would like to make a very special welcome to our guest today, Wardy NYM. My friend, you are here. Thank you so much for joining the podcast. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, seriously, there's been so much fun things to talk about regarding the Blue Jays. You guys have been pumping out some great content. Love everything about it. I've been talking about this already with you guys. But seriously, thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor. Well, we uh, we really appreciate it, man. And um, there's a lot of good stuff to talk about, like you just said. All of the offseason moves, I feel like we have been battling our yeah. two teams, like yeah. the Jays and the Mets, you know? Yeah, it's, yep. it's just like off-the-field battle. It's like you know, kind of like the Cold War, but with free agents and money mm-hmm. is kind of what the New York Mets and, and the Blue Jays have been all offseason. Yeah, and, and it feels like you guys – like won the last battle. I don't know if you won the war, but you definitely won the last battle with yeah, Taiwan yeah. Walker. Mm-hmm. What's your uh, what's your feelings on uh, on getting that guy? Well, I, I would show I would show more remorse, but the whole George Springer situation is like okay. I feel it's kind of even. I know we'll get to Frankie Lindor in a second too, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, I love I love Walker. Um, I've been a fan of his the past couple of years. Um, I was the first Mets anyone youtuber to put out a hypothetical video why walker should go to the mets in like what mid-december and i felt that way because at the time when the mets had their gm and jerry porter that schmuck he's gone now after what we saw happen but before then he was the assistant with the d-backs in the process he spoke glowingly of taiwan walker when they originally acquired him via trade and then right after that he got his tommy john surgery but finally healthy Really showed out between time with both the Mariners and the Jays this year, as we know, rocking yeah. a double zero. Now he's back to 99. I love it. I really do. This is a no risk high reward situation. He'd be a two or a three on numerous teams in the league, and he's going to be a fourth starter for the Mets. So I can't complain. It's amazing. And especially if you get Syndergaard back or when you get Syndergaard back, he's yep. even be what, maybe your fifth at that point? Yep. Behind exactly. Trevor? Right. And that's insane. Insanity. And, and I know a lot of people, a lot of people have told us when we've been like begging Walker to basically come back to the chase. <laughs> uh, they were like, well, you know, you look at his peripheral numbers, you look at his expected numbers and they're not really matching up to what he's been doing, you know, especially in 2020. But I, you can't really complain when we got this guy, he was legitimately our number two. And he would, when we signed, if he were to sign him with us, well, he, he would have legitimately he'd, been he'd our number still two. be our number two, man. Yeah. And, and I, I kept saying, that I thought this was a great contract. And a lot of people, um, a lot of Jays fans anyways, were like, so happy we didn't get locked down to this guy for two years at that crazy price. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? This guy's straight <laughs> up going to be our number two. Yeah. And they just got like literally their fifth pitcher. What do you think about that contract? For two years, $10 million a year, I think it's a steal, that honestly. A great game. But uh, I'm curious to know what a Mets fan thinks about that. Oh yeah, I mean you can quote me on it. When there when the initial reports were coming out that there was speculation Walker was asking for 10 mil per year, the first thing I put on Twitter was like two times twenty, sign me up. And then that's exactly what happened. And then there's a third year option as well. So I think that's great. He's not even making 10 mil his first year with the Mets. And I again I'm in all favor for it. I'm not worried about the Mets when it comes to spending now, luckily. Something that I've had to worry about in years prior, but with Steve Cohen now in the rain as a new owner, uh, they were throwing literally 40 mil and then 40 mil the second year right around and three mm. total years for Bauer that they lost down. So they have no problem going over the threshold should they wish. They don't have a problem spending the money as long as they deem it right. And maybe yeah. you could say it's a couple mil of an overpay, but who gives a damn? This is not a team that should be worrying about that type of thing. You're always going to have to overpay in some right for normally a free agent, especially Walker, who was arguably the second best pitcher on the market outside of Bauer and Oda Rizzi. So I'd say uh, take it as you will, but I'm all in favor of this pickup. I'm 
I'm honestly already trying to plan to gain his jersey, but currently oh, on the shop. Nice. 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 So absolutely, man. Hey, man, and you guys are definitely the front runners, especially with Bakoda rankings coming out. You guys are clearly the front runners. Well, they they kind of they like the you. Did you see the Pakota rankings? Oh, what a joke! Oh my, yeah, God. yeah. No, I, I was gonna say uh, like yeah. they kind of like really sucked you guys of off. Of course, a yes, bit. I agree. There was a little bit of flattery going on, a little bit of sucking happening. Mm-hmm. However, you guys are dominant, and I saw this coming like even before you guys made all the signings. But I actually wanted to comment on about all that whole money situation. Obviously, you guys got Lindor. One-year deal. I feel like you've probably talked about this a bunch, but tell because mm. Jay fans are wondering, are the Mets going to consider maybe signing back Lindor after the season, or are they going to spend a lot of money, get him on this contract while he's, well, like, what's it, $20 million right now, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, he's right around $20 mil. I think he's actually making 22 22.3. I actually got it written yep. down right here. Perfect. Yep, I was going to say. I was just about to say. <laughs> My guy's on it. <laughs> so so what do you think about that? Do you think he's going to possibly come back after the season, or, or does it depend on how the whole season goes? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. You guys don't want to see me what happens if the Mets don't have one door long term. Uh, I, there's no rational uh, decision making here for them to land Lindor and Carrasco literally for nothing uh, because of the fact that Lindor and Cleveland were backed in a corner, need to get rid of him because they knew that they couldn't keep him. They want to get something. And then you get Cookie Carrasco as well. But yeah, Lindor, <laughs> he's going to be extended. That's why I bought his jersey right away. I'm like, I'm not buying it. Say, you got it in the background, bro. He has yeah. to sign back now. You made this investment. Investment. I know the newspaper's in there too, so it's got it's got to happen. I do I do believe over the, in the next two weeks we will see an extension for Lindor. God willing, I think he's far more likely to even be extended before Conforto. Conforto, I'm a little bit more worried about um, prior this season just because he is a Scott Boris client. I don't mm-hmm. think he's going anywhere, but there is always that worry because of him wanting to get the most out of his um, players. So that is the one thing I will say. But yeah, no Lindor, I don't see him going anywhere. Uh, even with the Tatis contract now, I talked about how it might implement things. I would say that right now you're probably looking at a 10 year deal for Lindor upwards of 325 million. And yeah. I think that's very fair. Um, it's at least 300. You know, if you're, yeah. if you're going to lowball him, that's like, why even bother training for him in the first place? So if right. they get him anywhere between three and 325, I'll be ecstatic. And if it's even somehow lower, then I'll just be jaw dropped. But yeah, this is something mm-hmm. the Mets are going to um, definitely make sure they get done. Uh, because all their big moves seem at the time recording this are done for the off season. Yeah, well, I think you guys like I actually have a list of all of your moves here, and it is extensive. That makes two of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it is. It is truly extensive, dude. I, I was curious, um, because I know you guys were in on on Springer as well, and now you're talking yeah. about extending Lindor. Do you prefer the trade for Lindor over the signing of George Springer? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, look, Thanks, I. Will- Definitely enjoyed seeing George Springer in Queens, no doubt. And um, I, I will say I was happy to see him at least land with the Jays versus a rival or anything like that. I have no ill will against the Jays. I'm loving what they're doing, so I'm looking forward to talking about them a little bit in this discussion here with all their young guns. But, you yeah, know, when you look at the situation with Springer and the Mets, it seemed like a lock, as did Brad Hand, as did Bauer, as did all these big names at some point. You know, we simply didn't know – really the hard rationale behind um, negotiations between the Mets side things and Springer and others. The Mets really set a line, it would seem, for a lot of guys, and they didn't want to go past four years for Springer because they're worried right now with there still being uncertainty with the DH. Yes, Springer would be a massive upgrade in that outfield and as a guy that you could really have anywhere in that lineup batting-wise. You don't need him to bat lead off, but he would be killer, pro- similar to what they would have Lindor now, possibly in the three-hole, but – now that Springer, he's already passed um, 30 in his career, you're going to probably see two more seasons of him really being stellar, I would say strong in the center fielder. Uh, center, center field. Then you're going to probably have him either in the corner field or you're going to have him on DH. And with that uncertainty there, and with the Mets not wanting to hurt their long-term development going six years, that is why Lindor is so much more appealing to them, and that's, I'm ecstatic. Like Lindor is one of the best guys in the game. If you're going to ask yep. me today of the week, who would I prefer? Uh, no bias aside, prior to that trade, have, I'm still taking Lindor any and every day of the week. He's only 27. A shortstop is a crucial position to have. The Mets had an abysmal one defensively in Rosario, and I love the guy. Mm-hmm. Not personal against him, but it's a nine-day difference. Um, Lindor yeah. Yeah. will be a huge upgrade here. Yeah, no, I, I agree, man. Like, honestly, as much as I love George Springer, too, I think – 
it, not only, you know, uh, you didn't even mention that you also got Carrasco. You know what I mean? You've you got this young shortstop, and you're, you're hopefully you sign him to, like, kind of what the Dodgers did with Mookie. You do the exact same thing, lock him down long term, plus you get Carrasco. Uh, it's definitely going to really help you guys this year. Mm-hmm. Um, as well, we're talking about trades, we made a trade. Actually, yeah. the Blue Jays and the Mets, a tiny one, but honestly good for you guys because you guys dumped off Steven Matz on us because you guys didn't even have a spot for Steven Matz anymore, especially no. with Walker. Um, yeah, tell us, can you tell us a little bit like what are we going to expect from Matz this year? I know Blue Jay, Blue Jay fans are going crazy. Like they have no idea. Yeah, I want to know like, like I want to set a reasonable expectation for myself, you know, yeah. so I don't I, get too disappointed here. Or should it be like, like really like, oh, great upside or like, like, okay, it is what it is. Or like, <laughs> I don't, why are we even have this guy? Like, what are we, what are we here? Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, it's funny because the night before that happened, I was in gym for ball cap sports, a uh, live stream. And we were joking, and I've been saying for a while, I'm like, I made videos about him, like, Steven Matz, it looks like that rumors are picking up with him being dealt, and it made sense at the time. And I'm like, if he's going to go anywhere, and I said this in my videos, it's going to be the Jays, because reports came out from Ken Rosenthal uh, previous months prior to him signing his one-year five mil extension with the Mets that they tried dealing him to Toronto already, but it fell through. So I'm like, all right, maybe they'll circle back and try it out, especially with the Jays losing some starting pitching talent in free agency. So when that trade happened, I was like, Wow, that's perfect. I think that's good for both sides. What are you going to get with Steven Matz? That is the biggest question because (laughs) Matz has never been outside of Long Island. You know, this guy is really from Long Island. He grew up a dire Mets fan, got drafted by the Mets at the age of 16 out of high school. It's been a great story, but unfortunately, injuries dealing with Tommy John and everything else. He's had some shoulder struggles for a bit. Um, Just he hasn't been consistent enough. And I think in part with him playing for the Mets' hometown team, there's so much more pressure on than it normally would be as it is with those expectations. Mm, true. Yeah. So I think his mentality is the biggest thing. If you can get him out of the first inning, then I think you're cooking for at least solid five innings. But that was the biggest issue with him the past couple of years. He literally could not get out of the first. If he gave up at least a couple of hits with, with zero outs, you were literally doomed. Like, I've been there for mm-hmm. the outing. It's just right. it's a very unfortunate situation. I love Matt. He's a great guy. He's going to do so much for Toronto and the community as well. I hope that he really does well. I think if there's anywhere for him to thrive, I would imagine it would be Toronto because there's this young up-and-coming team with this kind of new regime, new look, really a lot of things to be excited about, and by all means completely different than the Mets in more ways than one. I think that's going to bode him well. So I can't guarantee you exactly what expectation you should have because this is such a foreign, uh, unique situation if you will. Yeah, uh, he's is. never been in something like this before. So I think mentality wise, it could be a game changer for him for the better to really help out in the back of that rotation. Well, I, I definitely right. hope so, man, because uh, like right now, I don't think he's even guaranteed a spot with us. Like I, I think it like he's kind of battling. It's like yeah. him stripling. Uh, we got a couple other guys actually, like fighting. Uh, they don't really talk about him, but Anthony K is one yeah, of the names oh, that yeah. we've actually traded Anthony from you K. guys. Like, we, yeah. we have a lot of young dudes that are, like, battling. Stripling, too. Honestly, Stripling is a nice option. I kind of like Stripling. Like, my, he's probably my favorite. Like, if I had to put, a, you know, money on a horse, it'd be that guy. Right, but, right. Uh, no, I'm, I'm excited for Steven Matz yeah. to, like, hopefully bounce yeah. back here. Um, as far as our team goes, because we've been talking a lot about the Mets and blah, blah, blah. Like, they're so good now. And, like, yeah, <laughs> like, us. that's, like, really nice. Yeah, it's, like, you hear about us right now, bro. Like, gas me up. Like, tell me about right, my I'll team. Get, I'll get Mar- Marcus Simeon. Is that all I need to say? Like, come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, Marcus Simeon, you, we could really unpack. I don't know if you saw our Marcus Simeon video, our, our initial reaction when he came out. <laughs> I, th- no. I think I saw it, part of it, at least. But in the okay. Line- Okay, well, obviously the first reaction is, wait a minute, we don't need him. But now that I see the makeup that they have coming into spring training with him playing second base, you know, and Bijo being a solid third baseman, and now it's confirmed that Vladdy will be the first baseman, you know, and then Teles is going to be that bench back, you know, DH can cover for first some days. It does look a lot nicer having that veteran presence up the middle of the field with upside of MVP caliber yeah, two years ago. I, I think that the uh I think that our lineup is pretty elite right now. Like, you know, we went from a god awful lineup in like twenty eighteen oh, and, and now it's like I would put us, you know, close to the top of the uh, top top of the league, like yeah. top ten for sure. I think that um, you know, our biggest thing when when we did get Simeon was um geez, like 
this is $18 million that right. maybe we could be putting towards a starting pitcher yeah. that, you know, like, let's face it, your rotation is fucking insane, man. Like, oh. that is, like, stacked. I would it put you guys, good. like, top, top three in the league, for top sure. Three, Padres, Dodgers, you guys. Yeah, yeah, not in that order. Like, I don't even know what the but, order yeah. is, but uh, it's like, you guys are right up there, and, and we are certainly – not uh so i love our lineup um actually that's a great question is our lineup better than your lineup batting batters mm. batters they're, they're close. close they're really they're close, really close. Um, um i think I right, right now, now trying to be unbiased i would give the mets the edge just because of their stars i think in a couple of years the jays very well could be either just as good if not better they're going to be neck and neck because, like, the Jays already have all these great bats popping off. You have Vladdy who shedded, what, like 42 pounds this offseason. Yeah, 42 pounds, man. Good. Yeah. But, like, Bo is just a dream. Oh, my God. I don't know, man. I really don't. They're, they're just so young and fun. Like, yeah. I, I have a feeling that they're going to have their normal hiccups. But, um, you know, the lineup is definitely not an issue. I, I definitely say they're neck and neck. I would give the slight edge to the Mets just because the bench is deeper in my opinion, or at least close to the Mets, what they've done with their bench moves with getting a guy that, you know, very well, that being Superman and Kevin Pillar. Also, Mm -hmm. we are now on the, these are guys that would normally be starters in many teams in the league, or they're going to be strictly a bench role year that comes in late in games, you know, uh, for different types of situation, situational heading and fielding. And then they also, um, added Albert Amora Jr., who granted doesn't have as grave a bat lately ever since the line drive situation. I don't know if you know the story there. But uh, since then, he still has good defensive game with some upside. And um, he had his best years with the Cubs his first couple of years with Chili Davis as his hand coach. And Chili Davis is a hand coach for the Mets. So um, there could be some relationships rekindled there. But um, mm-hmm. that would be kind of the X factor. I think the depth moves are what kind of edged the Jays out offensively. But there, I fully expect both of them to be popping off this year. And it, if the Jays get ahead of the Mets, I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to be all that surprised either. Let's play that way. No, no, it is very close, man. Like, it's for sure, like, the, the bats are neck and neck. Like, we do, like, we got into a situation where, you know, Randall Gritchick has been our starter for, the, like, throughout our rebuild, like, our starting, like, right fielder, center fielder. Yeah. Now he's on the bench. And, yeah. and that's insane because he's, like, our, I believe, our fourth or, no, fifth highest paid player. Yeah. Uh, so it it is it is crazy. Um I feel like but, their yeah. their lineup is more like I do think that it's a bit more proven than our lineup. Like yes, right. we have we, George Springer in, and we did get right. a couple other guys who like are pretty solid rocks, like you know what you're getting, but I think that our lineup has like potentially a higher ceiling, a yes. more upside mm-hmm. if they can all yeah, hit the way that people intend them to hit, you know? They're all like up and down the lineup, 1 through 9 can hit over 20 home runs, some even over 30, like half yeah. of them. a lot of them over 30. It's, it's, they're boppers. Like, yeah. let, let's be real. So yeah. Yeah. What do you, um, like, what, what do you think, Wardy? Like, do you think maybe the Jays have a chance to be the lead leaders in the home run category? I know it's kind of just like a random ass question, but like, what do you think? We're playing in, we're playing in Florida this year where apparently the fences are a lot shorter. Mm. And a lot yeah, more I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're going to have as good of a shot as any. I mean, I'm really excited for them. Uh, to say that the offense is an issue would be, like, unbelievably silly. Uh, I'm really looking forward to catching more Jays games this year. I, I think that they do have a good chance to really push, be one of the top uh, five, if not top three, um, teams in the league in regards to home runs this year. But I want to really go back to what you're talking about in regards to the rotation because, you know, as a Mets fan who last season, even though it was a short season, had the highest OPS in um, some of the Met, um, all of MLB's history, but couldn't even make uh, playoffs with the expanded format because of pitching depth. I know that issue. I know I've experienced it numerous times. Like uh, it's a it's a gut feeling because normally the Mets for the longest time, uh, at least me as a fan, the past six years where I've been following baseball religiously is they've had the pitching, but they haven't had the batting. The consistency hasn't been there. The defense was god awful. Still is not stellar, but it's getting better. Now they actually have the rotation. Now I look at the Jays. I see this young up and coming team that's so stellar offensively and with a lot of great fielders, both in the infield and the outfield. But that rotation is going to be the biggest thing that is really going to be a thorn in your side. You guys know that, obviously. So what oh, are your yeah. thoughts? That's what I want to think. What do you what well, are your expectations? Because in regards to the Simeon in particular, that deal, do you feel that that was almost um a do you think that was a smart decision, or do you think that was something where 
you would have probably you would have hoped that the Jays could have tried to pull through on the initial reports of a Hendricks and Bryant blockbuster. How much truth yeah. was there because the Mets have been connected with it? And would you be would you be okay with the possible assets that you could see going the other way? Because I have a feeling right. that the Jays just didn't want to give up enough. Let's uh let's unpack this one by one. So okay. First off, um, as far as pitching goes, this is my thought on pitching, and and this is why when I inevitably ask the question to you of who do you think won the offseason, my answer is going to be you guys. Yeah. And and the reason the reason is because the difference between a 250 and a 300 hitter is one hit a week. But the difference between a 4 ERA and a 3 ERA is a win and a loss. Um, and it's like to have that rotation is just so, so big. And and I do think that you guys beat us out there. As far as Simeon, I think both of us have said that we we like it for a one-year deal. Like, it's good. I mean, like, yeah. I'll sign anyone for one year, right? Like, give yeah. the guy a shot. He has MVP upside almost, right. right? Right. Would I have preferred that guy to be a pitcher? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree. Like, if, we're, if you're going to ship out any money, like, what you could have took that 18 million, you literally could have signed Walker. And like Odo, now that this market value is kind of going down, not a lot of people are talking to him, you can get Odo for an 8 million. Oh, you know? sure. You know what I mean? Like arguably that that's up to question still, but you could grab two quality arms right there, compete now, but the management has obviously made the decision that we're going to wait on pitching, let our homegrown guys, some of our acquisitions we've made over the past couple of years, give them a chance, those arms, and then go get a big quality free agent pitcher in a couple more years. So that's the decision they made. However, it would have been a hell of a lot more exciting to see the Jays go for it this year. And and what do you think about the, like, because he was asking about the Chris Bryant and the yeah. uh, the Hendricks trade? I, I know we've it, talked about we've it. We've talked about it. And it, again, it comes down to, like, if you want to do it now, I think it's going to cost a lot. It would definitely grab both those guys. You know, if we grab Marcus Simeon, I don't think we get Chris Bryant. I think grabbing nah. Marcus Simeon took us out of the Chris yeah, Bryant. Yeah, exactly immediately right there else it's just it's just overloading that infield um however yeah i do think it's going to cost a little bit of, of prospect capital uh, i do think that management is trying to go more towards the trade deadline where mm -hmm. there's maybe going to open up some other pitching and market options you know we got robbie ray out of arizona right a bad team that we needed to sell now granted robbie ray isn't kyle hendricks no however it was a little bit cheaper because i think the i think the management wants to protect that prospect pool they're really protective. They, yeah, dude, like they are super protective over that prospect pool. But I, I would say we're out for right now, like on yeah. all the free agents and trading. We're out for right now. In yeah. four yeah. months, if like we're kicking ass, then we're not going to be. No. And uh, we have some elite prospects that we just don't need, um, that we just yeah. simply don't need and aren't going to get playing time. And eventually they're going to get shipped and we're going to get a guy yeah. like a Hendrix or like a Castillo, or like a Herman Marquez. We made a video on him uh, yesterday. Should be trade yeah. for that guy. Um, so yeah, he's to, answer, good, to he's answer, a, he's a sneaky pickup. My uh, yeah, super, he'd be yeah, amazing. Super sneaky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, do we like the, yeah? It's basically like, do we pull the trigger now or do we pull the trigger later? We have bullets, meaning the prospects. Mm. When are we going to do it? Is it is this the right time? As, as much as I would have wanted to say yes. I'm going to trust the management a little bit longer. They have a plan. Let's see what happens this season. Let's see how good we do with the guys we have now, then start firing off some shots to see what we can prove our team with. Yeah, I think that's exactly what they're doing. I think that the Jays management is like, okay, you know, we have some very up and coming prospects, as we know, in regards to pitching still. And we're going to see how they roll this year because you still have to worry about the Yanks. You still have to worry about the Red Sox to an extent. They can always be pesky. And you have to worry about the Rays. You know, even with them losing Snell, you're you're going to expect like Michael Walker to have like a sub three year rate. It's ine inevitably going to happen. You know, this team always pops off each and every year, just like the A's do respectively um, yeah. for, in Oakland. So I think when you look at all that, they know that they have a lot up their uh, task and if they can kind of replicate what they did, or at least we're getting a taste of in the short season with these young guys in the lineup, then good things are going to happen. So if they have a deep run, great. Then they're exceeding expectations. And then if they end up falling short and say the playoffs because pitching, then Jay's management management will know, yes, we can compete with the top dogs now for the upcoming off seasons where we're going to really start to unload and help out this rotation where we feel it's best fit. So I think that's exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so who won then, man? Who, who won, won the offseason? I, I think 
I, I will give my quick answer, which is I do think it's you guys because you got a bit of everything. You got your needs. You got a star. You filled out the rotation. You even got some prospects from us, so you're welcome. You even got some prospects from us. I know. So I I'm actually, I'm actually guys. looking forward um, to them. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. I was looking forward to them too. <laughs> uh, but what, what do yeah. you think, man? Like, was this? Uh, did did you guys? Did you guys have the best off season? Yeah, I mean, in between us two, I would say yes. I don't think it's too far off though. Again, I think outside of the Lindor and Crasco deal, as stellar as that was, just the overall depth. Like I did a video um, as we're recording today. I just uploaded a video, my latest one with uh, Mark Giraffe Neck Mark, and we broke down everything that happened with the Mets and their offseason moves. Half of the Mets' forty-man roster currently is all new players. So talk about adding depth. These guys literally made more acquisitions than ever, like I've ever seen. It it's was incredible. double the year prior. So depth within the organization and the minors and with the current team, they just they're loaded for actually trying to contend and beat the top dogs in the division and have a deep run. It's not going to be easy. They have the Dodgers, they have the Padres, they have the Braves. They have a lot of teams that they still need to worry about in the NL, but it helps them get there. And the Jays, they made a lot of smart picks. And, and I think that they're in the right direction for sure. They're not far off. And people can even make the argument that the Padres had the best offseason, not even us two. So right. there is an argument as well. I think these are the top three teams in regards to the offseason, no doubt. The Dodgers mm -hmm. right around there. All the top teams, all the either the young and upcoming teams or the Dodgers who have been consistent, these four are the ones that all really stood out this offseason. So I'd, I'd give the edge to the Mets given their depth, but the Jays are right behind them. They're not far off. Absolutely, man. And now really quick, because we are running out a little bit of time. Sure. Um, project a record for the Mets. Project a record for the Jays. We already said Ooh. our two cents. What do you think? Okay. Um, projected record for the Mets. Uh, I think that they will end up with a solid 93 wins. And I think the Jays are going to end up with right around just, just first number that's popping off in my head is 88. But it would be no. awesome if they can get to 90. No, we'll take 88. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I You're need, welcome. I needed yeah, yeah. someone else to tell me that we were winning. <laughs> I didn't want to believe it. I, I, <laughs> Yo, I, was, uh, I was just checking out on my phone there Um, because I know that we played you guys. Looks like we have one series with you. Uh, yeah, I, th I yeah, I looked at uh, I looked it up a three game series. Um, like maybe cross reference me after this yeah. podcast. Um, but uh. You want to make a tiny wager on uh, on who's gonna win that series? We've been doing these little like push up bets with uh, with some other YouTubers <laughs> uh, for us beating you know or you guys beating our team. So I'm down to I'm down All to right. put a couple couple push ups on on us taking that series. All right. Okay. Is it how many games? Is it two two game series? Three three, three game okay. series. So uh, so we will obviously there will be a rubber match between us. Um. So I'm saying like if we uh if we take two out of those three. Off of you guys, uh, I want to see 50 push-ups from you on the podcast, bro. All right, bet. All right, and same thing, vice versa. Right. I think that's fair. Done. Yeah, I'll, Let's I'll go. That any day of the week. Sweet. All right, all right. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Awesome, man. Hey, thank you again, Tyler, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all the kind words, too, and all the support that you're giving the Blue Jays Today channel. Uh, and as well with your channel, man, keep up the great work. It's great to see you hustling out there every single day, especially with your hockey podcast. And now the New York Mets. Yeah. So good work, man. No thank kidding. you. Yeah, no, thank you all so much again. This was a great conversation. I look forward to building a relationship with you guys going forward. So thank you again, guys. Best of luck with your Jays. Really excited for the season. Heck yes, dude. Awesome. Take care, man. Have a good see ya. one. You too. Thank you. All righty, folks. So there you have it. Uh, that was uh, Wardy NYM uh, talking to us about the Mets and the Blue Jays and mm -hmm. uh, and the professional opinions over here think that uh, that they did win the offseason. Yeah. No, so. I, I agree. And like, guys, like I know everyone's like, go Jays. Like, it's got to be the Jays. Let's go. You know, let's let's look at the world. You know, we are in a good place. Yeah. Okay, we are in a good place. A lot of good things to feel good there, about. There are a lot of good things. A lot of good potential too. Like we still got a lot of guys that are up and coming in that rotation and that back half. So it's going to be a very very exciting season to say the least. Mm -hmm. But let us know your comments in the comments down below. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but who you think won this off season? Um, are we going to take them two out of three, or maybe even sweep these guys? I want to know your thoughts. Please let us uh, let us know. 
And guys, you can also follow us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Radio Public, and Breaker. Also, make sure to check out our Instagram, Twitter, our TikTok, everything on that. Likes. Also, become a Patreon today. Shout out, Kyle, new Patreon member. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Uh, as well, buy our merch. Our merch is on for sale. Just kidding. Actually, it's on sale. I was trying to be a salesman there. Uh, it's actually the exact same well, price. Well, no, it is. It is on sale. It's just the same price as it the was The same price before. with more shipping. Um, so, I mean, that, you know what? I just did not even sell it. Yeah. It's on sale for more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so buy it. Uh, <laughs> uh, as well, guys, you can always check out our website. Uh, become a Patreon, of course. Uh, oh, we're having our Wine Unwind happening this Thursday. Not this Thursday, but next Thursday. Yeah, man. You can check out our Wine Unwind one week away from today. The boys are going to get tipsy. A little tipsy, ask some questions. Everyone's like, when are you going to ask my questions? This is what we're mm -hmm. waiting for. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thanks so much for watching, folks. And go Jays go.